Hi, I'm Thomas from Believe in the Run. This is Robbie from Believe in the Run. And this is exciting because this is one of our favorite things. It's our wrap up of the year. Our best running shoes of 2021. Yes. Specifically road. And I don't know why, but this year seemed really long. Like some of the shoes that we're picking, we got back in like January. Well, you were like, we were talking about the Puma and you were like, did that come out Up this year? year? And I was like, maybe it did come out like a year and a half ago. No, it was like six months ago. Yeah, so bizarre. So without further ado, let's get into it. Robbie, what are we starting with? Are we starting at the pinnacle? We might as well get the best out of the way. I know right. some people like to save the best for last. I like to say, save the best for first. Actually, that's my life motto. Yeah, that's why when you go to his house, dinner starts with? Oh, dessert, always. Right. It's like a Matthew McConaughey quote. Is it? Oh, all right, like, all right, so, all right. Sounds like something he would say. <laughs> okay, all anyway, right. let's start it off. I am gonna put a caveat onto this one or a little asterisk. These are the best racing shoes for 2021. This does not include... Shoes that may have come out in 2020. Say like Nike Alpha Fly, which is a fan favorite for myself, Megan, some other people for race day. These are the best racing shoes that came out this year. Number one. Number one racing shoe for us. Meta Speed Sky. From Asics. From Asics, it is from <laughs> Asics. Why do we like this shoe, Robbie? I mean, this has all the things you want in a race shoe. There's super bouncy and responsive flight foam turbo. It has like a rocker feel to it, super lightweight upper. I mean, I've worn this for, I think, all my races this year, and I just feel like I can fly in it. Yeah, and it's also a PR shoe for Jarrett, our wide foot reviewer, mm -hmm. who is in it. Um, everybody who's tried it on our team really enjoys running this shoe. To me, it's the closest to that Vaporfly feel that everybody's been chasing for a long time. May even surpass it in some ways. Just a great all-around race day shoe. Like, Asics, Asics is here. Lightweight. It fits right into that. So when yep. you're looking at it, this is at the top. We've also seen great performances this year from Emma Bates at Chicago wearing this shoe. So congrats, A6, great job on this shoe. All right, moving on to honorable mention real quick. Surprise. Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. I don't even really love the regular Pro. I like it a lot, I think it's really good, but it just wasn't hitting the spot for me. Something about this update and the way that this upper works it just works for me. Same, I mean, I like the Pro a lot. I love this shoe, it was $50 more than the Pro, but again, the upper, I don't know, it just makes you feel, makes it feel like a faster and It's lighter, shoe. it yeah. is lighter, it and is. it just, it feels like race day. Yeah, so I don't even know if it's still available, but if you could find a pair out there, I'd pick it up. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Best tempo day. This shouldn't be a surprise if you follow our channel at all. We have raved about this shoe. Yeah, and actually, I didn't even get to try this shoe until a couple months ago, and I wear it quite often now. The New Balance Rebel, Fuel Cell Rebel V2. V2. I mean, and this was a surprise too, because the V1 was pretty good. The V1 was good. This update not only visually was stunning, it just, they nailed it with this fuel cell. It's a little lighter, it's a little bouncier. It really has kind of that transfer between the old school racing flat and the new style racing shoe. It, it just feels great, it feels fast. You put it on, you look down and you go, ah, oh, I'm ready to run fast. Yeah, and the midsole on this is just that perfect amount of bounce without being unstable. I kind of just, like, I love just <laughs> squeezy. <laughs> yeah, give, give me one of those like stress balls. You could cool. wear this for a daily trainer, but the problem that I find with that is that when I did wear it for a daily trainer, I ended up maybe wanting to push the pace a little bit and not staying in the right zone yeah. for my training. So that's why we put it in the tempo zone. This is one of our favorite shoes. I'd say it's one of my all-time favorite shoes. So who got runner-up in this category? All right, runner-up is the Endorph Saucony Endorphin Speed 2, which may not come as a surprise. This is our favorite overall shoe of 2020. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's basically the exact same shoe. That's my problem with it, and that's why I didn't really get into the contention, is it's just a little bit of an upper update, and it's not even that much of an upper update. Mm -hmm. We actually like the Run Shield version of it. Yeah, personally, I do like the Run Shield version better. I mean, it's actually lighter than yeah. this version, and it gives you a little bit of protection in wet weather. 
I would say almost all my tempo runs, I'm taking the speed. It's a fun shoe. You can use a daily trainer. You can use it for fast days. Some people can use it for race. So it really is a fantastic shoe from Saucony. Maybe they don't need to update it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is actually probably the most coveted award I'd say that we have because the majority of your runs are gonna be in this next category. Yeah, and we almost gave it a best overall shoe, but we decided to put it as best daily trainer. Yeah. So best daily trainer and possibly best overall shoe. Asics Nova Blast 2. Now, we didn't really love the Asics Nova Blast 1, although a lot of people did like that shoe a lot. And then they kind of firmed up the midsole just a touch so it wasn't so unstable. And something about that just made this shoe a dream. Yeah, we were so excited about the first version because it did have a really sweet step and feel. This flight foam is really nice underfoot. But the problem was when we got out there, it felt a little squirrely in the heel. As a midfoot striker, the arch here and the way that the heel was kind of like pretty soft. When we landed, it just kind of wasn't right for me. Megan really liked the first version. There's some people that really liked the first version. It didn't work for us. This version, they fixed some of those problems. They firmed up the heel a little bit, brought it more so that I would say it has more of a ground feel than the first one has. Yeah, and it's still is super bouncy. The flight foam blast is exceptional. The upper is incredibly comfortable and fits perfectly as much as you would like an upper to fit. Yeah. And great. why this one was so good is anybody that we recommended this shoe to loved it. Mm -hmm. All we got was positive feedback when we said, you know what, try the Nova Blast 2. We've all put a ton of miles on it. Meg's put hundreds and hundreds of miles yeah. on hers. So. Meg's destroyed hers. Anyway, so that's always a good, good enough reason to call it best daily trainer of the year. Runner up, this might be a little bit of a controversy for some people, but honestly, I reach for this shoe all the time. Yeah, this is what I would call a standard. The Nike Pegasus 38. I mean, we're almost four decades into this shoe. Yeah, when I'm talking to people and they're getting into running and they haven't really found their shoe yet and they just want something they can eat up daily miles in, maybe race a 5K, maybe do, you know, their different uh, running needs. This pretty much covers it all and it's in a very affordable package at mm -hmm. 120. Yep. And you've got the React foam, you've got an air pocket underneath the toes to give you that little bit of a launch sensation. It fits well. Last year, they had a little problem with heel lift. They fixed that. Honestly, the outsole is pretty solid. This is one of those shoes you can take on the trails if you really need to. In fact, a lot of trail runners we go out with yeah. just wear the Pegasus for everything. So that's why this one is a runner up and it's still one of my favorites. For sure. Max Daily Cushion winner. We're talking about New Balance More V3. The first two versions of this shoe, Robbie, not so good. No, I actually haven't run in this shoe, so I'll let you tell everyone about it. He really had to take Meg's and my word for this one. Meg absolutely adores the shoe. This is her jam. Max Cushion, lots of soft feel underfoot. You've got so much fresh foam here that when you land, it just feels nice on like from your feet all the way up to your hips. It's just a pleasurable ride. Mm -hmm. You've got plenty of rubber. And the interesting thing, even though it's a little bit on the heavier side, it can run fast. I was surprised how many times I was just on an easy run and just the way that this rolls through your stride, it just does everything. And you might be like, well, what's the difference between this and the 1080? 1080 doesn't have quite the same amount of cushioning and I really feel it comes down to this upper. The upper on this was one of the best uppers on a New Balance shoe. It just fits perfect. This whole shoe works together cohesively. It's one of the best shoes. We said they out hoka Hoka. When you think of Max Cushion, you think of Hoka. This fresh foam felt a little livelier underfoot, a little bouncier. This was really a great Max Cushion shoe. So let's move on to the honorable mention for Max Cushion shoe. And this might be a surprise to some people. The Hoka Bondi X. The Bondi has always been Hoka's most Max Cushion uh, shoe, which obviously Hoka is no stranger to cushion. Except this time it has a full length carbon plate in it, which a lot of people were like, is that really necessary? Or are you just doing it to throw a carbon plate and everything? After running it, I think the carbon plate helps. Okay. Because yeah. you softened up the foam. So it's that carbon plate is in there to help give a little bit of stability. Yeah. And this is actually probably one of Meg's favorite shoes of the year. I would say between this and the more V3, she put a ton of miles in these. She really liked this one. I would say why we edged out this for the more three was price. This one runs 
200 bucks. Yeah, it's up there. I mean, this is, I think, the most expensive Hoka shoe right now at $200. I also ran in this shoe and was somewhat surprised by it as well. I It's a little blocky, of course, because mm -hmm. it is a Bondi X um, or a Bondi platform. Once you get rolling in it, it really does roll along. Yeah. Funny enough, I did feel like I could run faster in the more V3 than I could in this shoe. Mm. Some of that energy zap, even with the plate, just didn't do it. So that's why I leaned a little bit towards the more V3 again. You know what I have to say, Robbie? You complain about Hoka upper sometimes. I felt like this one was one a pretty solid upper. I actually agree. This was one of the better uppers I've experienced from Hoka. So well done on that aspect. Yeah. If you're a super Hoka fan and you really love the Bondi, you're really gonna love the Bondi X. All right, so next up is Best Stability Shoe 2021. And this is actually kind of a tie between the Nike React Infinity and the Asics Gel Kayano Lite 2, though this is the first version. I was gonna ask people to leave their comments about how they <laughs> saw that this wasn't the right version. <laughs> right. Yeah, so our stability reviewers, and we hand this one off because Robbie and I really don't need stability. We're neutral, Meg doesn't need stability. We review some of the stability shoes just to get a feel for them, see how they are. And actually, I like both of these shoes. We hand it off to Aldrin and, and Mercer and some of our other reviewers to let us know what they think. The reason why I'm able to hold this first version is they didn't even change the midsole or outsole. I'll get into the Nike React Infinity. This is the second version. Uh, the first version kind of was like a replacement for the Epic React, which was disappointing for some people. Other people loved it. This has supports on the sides with these plastic clip type things. There's like a meter. rails. Like rails, you could say. I don't know for the like, guide rails. Who owns that word? Anyways, there's also a medial piece in here for a little bit of extra support and Overall, pretty solid daily trainer. Our stability reviewer Aldrin put in around 400 to 500 miles in the shoe this year. Biggest complaint we get on this shoe is the arch. Yeah, which you know is a little bit annoying at first, but then I think you kind of get used to it. It is something that I'll notice if I wear the shoe casually, I start sometimes to feel that arch support. This shoe though, pretty much everybody that's worn this has enjoyed this run. It's a little bit different, so it doesn't have the traditional you know, stability plate. Both of these shoes are moving the stability game into a different way of, of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. So this one does it with this rail and this clip on the back. You're going to see in the Kayano, the way that the geometry works on the foam here, you kind of see how, how it's different shapes are creating more lift on one side versus the other side. There's some 3D stuff going on side, and it still has a little piece of gel underneath the toe for comfort. Yeah, and it uses flight foam light, which is a nice, light, bouncy midsole. And uh, partially recycled. Partially recycled. This whole thing about the light line. Is or not recycled. Is it recycled or it comes from sugar cane? It's one of those Yeah, things. something like that. Eco-friendly. They're trying to be good. But that's one of the things about the light line is that they more eco-friendly, eco-cautious. So, but it's still a great shoe. Next up, most innovative shoe of 2021. I don't know if most innovative shoes is a real category, but I wanted to throw this in here somehow, so we made it up. This kind of has its own category, and it was something that was a surprise. Like, when we first got these out of the box, we were like, oh, yeah, like, what is for this? Real, for real, Brooks, this is Yeah, insane. what is this? Is this some sort of toy? <laughs> like, are we going to want to run in this? It looks crazy. Yeah, and then we put it on, and it turns out it's a pretty awesome shoe. Yeah, we loved running it. And maybe the best Brooks shoe in, like, the last five years. It's my favorite Brooks shoe, yeah. period. And I've recommended this to some people and they've all loved it as well. Also an expensive shoe. It is, it's $200, so it's definitely the higher price point for Brooks. Some stuff to notice about it is the decoupled heel. You can see it comes apart here. So you get two different parts coming off. And what that does is normally, I've been finding that I really like a rockered shoe. This isn't rockered, it's more of a traditional drop, but the way that this works through your stride, you get kind of that rockered feel and you get a little flick off the toe and surprisingly, you can pick up the speed in this. Yeah, and it's an insanely light shoe. It's somewhere around eight ounces or so. For the, for this much uh, cushion, it's pretty crazy. And don't be surprised to see this in some Brooks shoes coming out in 2022 or so we've heard. Yeah, so. nitrogen infused foam. You've got a nice booty. I love the way this tongue works. It's not gusseted, it's just like complete like sock overlap. Nice. It just fits well. It feels great underfoot. The cushioning is dialed in. I just loved everything about this. You should go back, watch our review on it again. This is one of my favorite shoes of this year. And yeah. I love what Brooks is doing. I'd like to see more experimentation like this. Well done, Brooks. So most surprising shoe of 2021, I think we're gonna say shoes. Yeah. 
Puma. Out of nowhere, it was like, Puma, are they still on running? First came out with a DV8 Nitro, nitrogen infused midsole, Puma grip, plate, just a fun, fast daily trainer. Then it just rambled off. We got the Liberate. The Velocity Nitro, the Eternity Nitro, which is a stability shoe. By the way, that could have been honorable mention for stability shoe too, because Aldrin ran the hell out of he that did, thing. Yeah. yeah. And it's just a full lineup from head to toe. And then we saw Molly running in the DV8 Elite. Nitro SP. So this is the SP colorway. Uh, this is also the DV8 as well, yeah. but this is basically the second colorway that came out. Anyways, all I have to say, Puma, Puma out of nowhere, kind of shaking things up. And the, all the shoes were like very solid. Like the Liberate Nitro was one of the best Tepo shoes of this past year. Yeah, we're probably gonna be harder on them next year when stuff comes out. For freshmen, they came out and got on the varsity team right off the bench. Exactly, so well done Puma. Yeah, congrats guys. Honorable mention for most surprising shoe of the year goes to the APL Streamline. <laughs> it's kind of a crazy one. Well, let's just start with a little history lesson. When we first got this shoe, Robbie saw it and they sent us a message and I was like, eh, I never heard of that. It looks kind of like a Nike ripoff. I don't know if I want that. Yeah. And then Robbie got his pair sent and I took a look at it and I was like, you know what? That actually looks kind of interesting. After he found out it cost $300. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, hey, send me one of those. They got here and I was like, okay, proprietary foam, all this stuff, this sounds like BS, it's just an expensive shoe. Yeah. I probably enjoyed the miles in this shoe <laughs> more than just about any other shoe that we got. There's only a few daily trainers I like more than this. This could have even been in contention for top daily trainer, except for, you mentioned it. The price? Yeah, like I can't be recommending $300 running yeah, shoes and, and for daily trainers. There was a little bit of misses in the upper was a little like way too tight and narrow, but overall same. I was like, this is a pretty sweet shoe. For somebody who is a fashion, known for their fashion shoes more than like performance, to put this out there with like a pretty nice foam and a good ride, I was like, I was shocked. I love the miles I put in on this shoe. The foam feels great. I don't know what they put in there. They said proprietary and I was kind of scoffing at it because everybody says <laughs> right. proprietary foam, but this really felt good underfoot. I'm, and I'm it, pretty sure it's an EVA blend too, but whatever that EVA blend is, like I this know, is other the one. people figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> and, and tons of rubber on it too. So, you know, if you want to flex and you want to have a shoe that is maybe a little expensive. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. This is a shoe that I would definitely give a shot to. We see it all the time, brands like Allbirds or other people putting out shoes that are more lifestyle, meant for running. And honestly, they usually fall flat. Yeah. This is different. Yeah, these felt great. So, all right. if you got the cash, you might as well give these a shot. Okay. This no, is no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. How do I say this? Robbie is always talking about this shoe. Like if something comes up and we're like, hey, what do you think? What shoe? Max Road 5. Yeah. You like could, he pretty much prescribed this You could see me joining a call and then like spreading, evangelizing the words. Like, you could race in it. <laughs> you could run in it. It's the best. What makes you love this shoe so much, Robbie? So by the way, this category is best played at Daily Trainer because I was making a category for this yeah. shoe. Robbie, basically I said, it, you can't, it, it, da he's going to give it best Daily Trainer. And I'm like, it's got a plate in it. You can't do that. And no. <laughs> All right, so we're here. By the way, the plate in this is pretty small. It's just like an H plate in the forefoot, but it's, nevertheless, it's plated. What makes this such a great shoe? I don't know. It's the combination of this hyperburst foam and the rocker. It's like everything that Skechers has ever done has finally come together to make the best shoe they've ever made. And they were the first people to start playing around with the nitrogen infused foam. And I remember when I was at the running event the first time, People were kind of scoffing at some of their shoes because they're like, oh, it's just pool noodles. I mean, now, guess who's using the pool noodles? Mm -hmm. Everybody. And by the way, you can scoff at Skechers all you want. They put out great product. I don't know. I just love this shoe for everything, for daily runs, for tempo, for you really could use this as a marathon shoe. The only caveat I have would be is the upper needs some work. It's definitely a little too baggy and roomy, like just especially here in the forefoot. The uppers are where Skechers have been struggling yeah. lately. But if they can figure that out, I mean, this would be pretty much my perfect shoe. I love it. And it was funny because Robbie, at first I didn't get this shoe, but he made sure I got it because I know 
it it was far enough along in the year that he was like, this might be my favorite shoe. <laughs> so he wanted me to try it. It is a really awesome shoe. The ride on it is fantastic. It has a very nice rockered feel through it. You've got the Goodyear rubber, the nitrogen infused foam, the plate gives it just that little bit of liveliness off mm -hmm. the toe that really helps. So like when we talk about the Pegasus 38 having the air bubble that gives you that little pop, this little H plate just gives you that little extra something off the toe yep. that makes you feel good when you're running in it. It's a great shoe. Too. Okay, Robbie, runner up for the Max Road 5. Hoka Carbon X2. So it's got a plate. It does. Yeah. It has foam. It has a sh upper. <laughs> it's just like a shoe. But what makes this different than the Hoka Carbon X1, which we weren't a huge fan of? Well, what they did that I really like is they moved the plate down away from the foot. So originally the plate was closer to the foot and there's some talk back and forth of if the plate's closer to the foot, are you getting more of the advantage of the carbon plate? Or if it moves further away, are you losing some of the advantage? Why it works in this shoe is you're getting that nice soft feel from the foam on the top. You still get that plated feel and that rockered like firmness coming off the toe. So it really works a lot better to me than the first version did. This was a whole turnaround. The first version, I didn't really love. This shoe, it's, this was one of my favorites this year. I mean, in the beginning of the year, this is one of, you were thinking oh, this yeah. might be one of the best. Yep. And it turns out it still was. It is a great shoe. So if you're looking for something plated and you want to uh, try a Hoka shoe with a plate, this is probably, I, I don't know, the Bondi X and this, they're both right there neck and neck for me for favorite plated Hoka shoe. So we talked about a $300 shoe that surprised us, Robbie. What about this shoe? This is our best budget shoe of the year. This is the New Balance Fuel Cell Propel V3. This shoe is, is it under $100? It is exactly $100. Might well, be $99, can't remember. Yeah, $999, $99. Mm, okay. Yeah, for $100, you're getting a great value out of this. It's a lightweight daily trainer. You have the fuel cell midsole here, a nice layer of rubber, so that'll last you a decent amount of miles. It's just a pretty nice shoe for that price point. It kind of reminds me of the Rebel V2, but where it falls a little bit short from that is you don't have that really light, airy upper. And with all the rubber on the midsole that's gonna make the shoe last longer, it kind of takes away some of that bounce, some of that feel that you get out of the Rebel V2. Yeah, but for a hundred bucks, hey, you can't beat it. A shoe that we don't have on <laughs> hand right now that we're gonna give another value to is the Brooks Rebel 5. And the Brooks Rebel has always been one of my favorite budget daily trainers for the last three years, I think. And I'm still putting it up there. It's one of those underrated shoes that nobody talks about, but it's like a hundred bucks, you can get it on sale for even cheaper. And it's it does everything that you really need from a daily trainer. Yeah. So that's it, that's a wrap, right? Nope, we still have one more. That's not it. So Robbie, we're done running. Mm -hmm. Our feet are barking. Ooh, barking so bad. So what are we gonna wolf, do? Wolf. Gonna reach for my nearest pair of Deckers. I don't even care which Deckers it is, I'm reaching for it. I feel like we need to stop like pimping Deckers. Yeah. We do it too much. This is a shoe that all of us like. If you, looked, if you came in the office today, Three out of the four of us are wearing this exact shoe. And Robbie had to take this off to show it to you. I did. I'm wearing a Norda on one shoe and a Decker's on, on one yeah. foot and Decker's on the other. Yeah. This shoe is so soft and comfy. Yeah, so this is their shoe boot type thing. It's called the SPSK. Uh, it has a sheepskin upper. Yeah. Wool, super comfy wool interior. I mean. It's the best of an Ugg boot and a sneaker and a slipper. Basically. All crushed into one shoe with a nice, really nice layer uh -huh. of foam. I mean, but even in the summertime, I was wearing their sandals pretty much yeah. nonstop, which look ridiculous, trust me. Yeah. Wool, wool interior sandals, what? Yeah, I'm wearing <laughs> that. For sure, best recovery shoes of the year. Go to Deckers. Thank you, Deckers, for doing the thing you do. Yeah. We're probably wearing more versions of Decker shoes than just about anything around here. Yep. Robbie and I are known for our fast times at the track. Oh, for sure. You've mm -hmm. seen us out there doing two minute 800s. Screwing my spikes in. Actually, I've never seen you do that. I've never put a pair of spikes on my feet. <laughs> yeah, so we put the, we're, we started later on in life. So we sub all the sub spike out. reviews out to our young friends. Yeah, our high school kids. Yeah. So uh, Jordy and Mercer reviewed a bunch of spikes this year and it came out that their favorite spike of the year was the New Balance Fuel Cell MDX. It's a 
four ounce middle distance spike. Uh, Jordy actually broke her mile time by five seconds this year. Boom. In that spike. Uh, they both loved it. And we saw it on the feet of a lot of athletes at the Olympics who performed pretty, pretty well in it. Um, yeah. So there you go. You're I think if we got a pair of these, we could also go to the Olympics. We should probably, yeah, New Balance, send us some stuff. Yeah. And the runner up for the spike was a Nike Air Zoom Victory with a uh, Zoom X and the uh, air unit in the forefoot. Uh, yeah, our high school athletes love that shoe. They ran it. The Dragonfly had some issues. I think it, yeah. we've seen it come apart in some circumstances. I think so. Mercer actually really likes the Dragonfly a lot, but I yeah. mean, how can you not like those shoes? They look so cool. I mean, they do look pretty awesome. It makes me wish I was actually fast. So. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe this year is the year that we try spikes. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Thanks for watching the uh, best running shoes of 2021. If you agree with us, give us a like. If you don't agree with us, let us know in the comments. Tell us like, hey, you got it wrong or this is what my favorite shoe is. We'd love to hear from you. This to us is like everything from this year. So this is great to have it all in one little review. I hope it's helpful for you. If you're looking for shoes, I hope it confirms your feelings if you already have the shoes so anything else you want to tell the people robbie no just thanks so much for watching us and our ridiculous reviews this is actually like somewhat of a normal review because we yeah. had to get through it pretty quickly so don't worry there'll be plenty of meandering on the upcoming shoe reviews for yeah we'll talk about cookies and all the donuts and things yeah oh we're gonna do a donut review don't you worry yeah all right all right guys thanks peace